Hi guys, it's Sophie. Um, I'm back. I haven't done this in about a year, I think. Um, the last video I made was about a year ago. It was my best books of 2018 video and I'm back here now with the same video, best books so far halfway through uh, 2019. Um, the reason I haven't made videos is just life. I moved. It was super busy. Also, I'm a little bit rusty, so bear with me. Um, and I might also make, uh, still make a video of the best books of 2018 in total because I never made that and I would love to tell you about some of the amazing books that I read last year, even though I know it's super late. Maybe, probably no one will watch it, but who knows, I'll do it for me. 10 books that I read so far this year that I really enjoyed. They're not really in any particular order. Um, I'll put them up on the screen, the covers, and uh, yeah, I have my screen here to look at, so. Let's go. Um, so the first book that I want to tell you about is Unclean Jobs for Women and Girls by Alyssa Nutting. Nutting. Um, this book of short stories is so amazing. Um, and it's just the weirdest little stories. Some of them are quite short. Um, some of them are a little bit longer. The, the ones that really stuck with me are one where the narrator, a woman, talks about her friend, frenemy, who's like a gorgeous Finnish supermodel, who's like the weirdest, who kind of treats her as a um, assistant slash slave slash guinea pig, um, and she follows her around and it's just so painful and weird. Um, there's another one um, from the perspective of a woman who's a TV presenter. She presents this game show where three men um, go to the moon and they have to like do all these challenges on the way to the moon and the winner gets to have sex with her on the moon. The, the craziest, weirdest short stories that are all about, you know, jobs or tasks or roles for women and girls that are really, really strange and dirty and weird, everything about it, I loved. So I started for me. Um, so yeah, this was Girls and Boys by Dennis Kelly, and it was uh, performed by Carrie Mulligan, um, who also performed it, I think, in a theater as a monologue play. Um, so it's very close, I think, to getting the real experience, except for the visual part of it. And of course, she's a wonderful actress and she did it really well, but it's also so powerful. I never heard of it. I didn't know what I was getting into. It was a free thing that I didn't choose. I just thought I'll listen to it quickly on the train. Um, oh, and it just, just hits you in the stomach. It's so good. Uh, and it starts out being just about, she's telling this, her life story, I guess, from the moment she met her partner um, or her ex-partner. Um, and it's about their sort of the start of their relationship and falling in love, but it's not sappy or romantic. It's very realistic and like funny and good. And then they have kids and it's kind of about becoming a parent and how that changes their life and kind of jumps through time. But then something really dramatic happens. I don't want to spoil it because I didn't see it coming. Um, and it is, it is heart-wrenching and beautiful and funny and so so powerful so really give that a read or preferably listen or if you can watch it somewhere do it it's really good the next book i want to mention is when i hate you by nina Kramsami. i knew about this book because it was shortlisted for the bailey's women's prize i think last year um and it's a novel i think kind of auto fiction maybe um about a woman who um, marries a man uh, in they live in India and she's a writer or poet um, and she works from home and she immediately is kind of isolated because they moved to this place where she doesn't know anyone and she works from home um, so she's pretty isolated and then he starts to abuse her um, and it's really about, and she kind of writes to do with the pain and with her own emotions and how all these feelings of how could I be this kind of woman that this happens to, um, but also you really get to see the inner workings of that, like how um, domestic abuse is kind of a slippery slope and how it fucks with your mind and you don't know where, who to turn to or where to go. Um, 
even though from the outside in it looks like there are all these ways out when you don't have to like uh, put up with this it's 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 very different when you're in it and it really does such a good job of showing the complexity to that and all of the different layers emotionally and yeah how, how a person was broken down in this situation so that's very very um heavy uh, but very beautifully done i really enjoyed it um the next one is normal people by sally rooney which everyone and their grandma has been reading in the last year or so um, I'm actually currently reading Conversations with Friends because I haven't yet, so I'm very curious, but I love normal people. I don't know, it's a very simple story about a boy and a girl, they meet in high school and it kind of follows them um, up until they, become, they go to college and they become adults. Um, and they have this sort of relationship, yeah, it kind of goes on and off and back and forth, and it's kind of about all of the things that go unsaid that should have been said. In the background there are also these issues of class and um, what we think of ourselves and mental health and family um, and self-esteem and where that comes from and how we look at others looking at us and all of these sorts of things. So all of the, I guess, the sort of subtleties of growing up, coming of age, love, sex, relationships, um, and just social relationships in general. And it, it was so intricately and beautifully done. I love the characters read it. <laughs> then I read um, Convenience, Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This is translated from the Japanese um, and it's a very short novel, I guess a novella, about a woman who is I think in her 30s in um, Japan, in Tokyo, and she works in a small convenience store. And it's really just about that. It's just someone who loves working in a store, knows the inner workings of the store and and loves to just sort of think of it like clockwork and be, become really good at her job and like managing all of the intricate little things and who comes in daily and whatnot, what's on sale and stuff. And she's kind of socially awkward um, or maybe like not really interested in social relationships. Um, and people view her as this really weird outcast or not even an outcast, but like she should have more in her life and she kind of pretends to be someone who she's not and I thought it was just so lovely kind of like normal people in the sense I mean very different but looking kind of critically through this tiny story of this one woman at our social relationships and expectations and the hierarchies that we create for ourselves and the pathways that we force ourselves and each other down and I yeah, I thought it was quite strong in that sense. Then for something quite different, I really loved Friday Black by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya. Um, this is also a short story collection with some wacko, very strange, beautiful stories that kind of form a very nice uh, whole. They kind of deal with race in America and inequality around race or along racial divides. Um, in a really interesting way by kind of, it reminded me a little bit of the 10th of December of George Saunders in the sense that it has a kind of Black Mirror-esque feel. Like some of the stories are not quite dystopian, but kind of in that direction. Uh, and the title is derived from a story um, about Black Friday. And uh, yeah, it's a, there's a couple of stories actually in the book about um, people working in a clothing store for very little money. Um, on Black Friday and um, in this particular Black Friday where people actually murder each other in stores to get to the sales. So it's that kind of sets the tone for the rest of it. And there's also a really, really beautiful story about um, people, um, black people dressing up um, in like these beautiful, vintage, gorgeous, stylish outfits um, to go and hunt down white people in gangs. And it's amazing. Like, oh, they're so good. They're really, really powerful and kind of funny, but very dark. And um, yeah, definitely worth your read. Then I have two more short story collections for you. Uh, one is Wait Till You See Me Dance by Deb Owen Unferth. And um, oh, these are also so gorgeous. It really reminded me of Miranda July. So if you like her short stories, definitely check this one out. 
Um, there's one with about turtles in a basement that's really good and it does really interesting things with perspective like it switches back and forth between characters like every other sentence so it's very like mind fuckery to read but it doesn't it's not very jarring it was really well done so i recommend that and the other short story collection i want to recommend is you know you want this by kristen rupenian um i haven't heard anyone on booktube that i follow talk about this i just saw it in a bookshop it had like big bold um, silver foil letters in the front and it had this title and I just thought yes I do want this yes I do <laughs> especially when I read it and it had a quote from Carmen Ruby and Machado on it and I was like yes this sounds like my jam and it was it did not disappoint um, it opens with this horrible story that just is about people um, coercing this friend of theirs into first a sexual relationship and then a BDSM relationship and then who knows where and it's so dark and awful but so well done and this is kind of the tone of the whole thing like it's um it's dark it's smart it's funny um and it's just delicious um a book I want to give I want to include or give an honorable mention it's not my favorite but I did really enjoy it is The New Me by Halle Butler yeah, this reminded me of My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atissa Mashvai. Um, it's kind of like that book. It's also about a young woman who just can't seem, in her like late 20s or 30s, just can't seem to get her life together. Um, it's just kind of a shitty temp job that she doesn't like, but she wants to keep, but she keeps getting fired from jobs. Um, and it's about like trying so hard to impress at something that you hate. This place that you hate, these people that you don't like. Um, and then also there's a couple of chapters from the perspective of the people around her, her neighbors, her um, supervisor at this temp job, some other people, um, in which you learn that they don't like her at all and they don't want to keep her on. Uh, and it's just so painful and she's trying so hard to, or she she's not even really trying very hard, but she's just down in the dumps and she keeps thinking like I should do this to improve myself I should get some new clothes and start doing stretches and eat better and quit smoking and then she does it for a day and then fails and life throws life throws something at her it's just it just keeps getting worse and it's in a way very relatable and in another way it's just awful but I think for a lot of millennials who might have tried to find jobs in the recession or still are struggling, have debt, um, are dealing with like superficial date culture, friendships, this is great. Like you'll either feel really supported in knowing there are other people struggling or you'll feel much better about yourself because you're doing so great compared to this girl. Quite insightful within its simplicity and it's the capsule that it was. And then I want to mention my favorite book of the year so far, shouldn't be a surprise really, um, and that's Spring by Ellie Smith. It's the third one in her seasonal quartet. I've read them all and I've loved them all and I loved winter more than autumn even though I loved autumn so much and I love spring more than winter. It's so good. It took me a while to get into it, like I pre-ordered it, it got here a couple days late, I was in London a few days before, um, I was in London when it um, was published and I saw it in all the bookstores and I was just like why don't I have it yet, I can't buy it because I've already bought it and it's not at my house, so I got really frustrated that it was a week late, but it arrived and I started reading it and then I was like yeah. because the first the storyline that the book opens with it's kind of like it refers to all of these other writers and artists that I didn't know and it's about this middle-aged man and I'm like why do I care about a middle-aged white man um, <laughs> but then when you get into it you kind of see that he represents um, the boomer generation in a sense um, in such a clever way it is about generations and also about hope 
Um, a big part of the story centers around uh, immigrant detention centers in the UK, which is very difficult to read about because that is no like faint shit that's serious. But it's also very hopeful at the same time, not at all. <laughs> like, it's about how the machine grinds and how we all support the machine of you know the status quo and the government and the people holding holding some of us out and some of us in and safe but not really safe um it's so good i don't know what else to say about it i think next year when summer comes out and i read it i will do a video about all four of them and kind of the different themes and things but it's again it's so now and it's so relevant oh and there's this one thing i want to say about it is that there's these couple of short chapters there's one in the beginning and there's a couple every couple of chapters there is one there's like a couple of pages from the perspective of facebook or social media or from the perspective of the earth um who's like you guys are fucking me over but i don't care i'll be here you know and there's i don't know there's a couple of these really amazing amazing little chapters and they're oh, they're so good it's their masterpieces go read them goodbye thank you very much for watching subscribe and comment and stuff and i'll see you next time hopefully soon ciao